At dawn this morning, the police went to the Black Panther headquarters with warrants for the arrest of two Panthers. The intermittent warfare between the Black Panthers and police erupted today in Los Angeles. There, a group of them barricaded themselves in their headquarters and fought police with automatic weapons and hand grenades. I go downstairs to the second floor. We heard all this noise, a helicopter. We jumped up. We grabbed the guns. There were police officers with rifles across the street on rooftops, police officers in the back. They put a charge on the door, the door blew open, and the police came running in. There was heavy gunfire, and they shot three police officers. We saw this little cloud come around the corner. When that tear gas hit you, that tear gas, it wasn't no joke. We were like rats in a hole being shot at for four or five hours. Freeman and five others surrendered to a police force like they'd never seen before. When I came out and I looked up, saw them in their black uniforms and everything, I'm like, yeah, who the hell is this? Black boots, black pants, black shirts. They did not look like police at all. That's because they were a new kind of cop, members of a special division of the Los Angeles Police Department who made their debut at the shootout. It was very similar to a military operation in the tactics and techniques we had to employ. Five-man SWAT teams, marksmen trained in special operations, were created to deal with extraordinary events, such as snipers, hostage situations, and other violent confrontations. The late Daryl Gates, former chief of the LAPD, came up with the name. His first thought was to call them special weapons attack teams. Someone wiser than I was said, no, you can't say attack. And when I thought about it, I thought, you're right. So it became special weapons and tactics. The idea for SWAT teams was formed a few years earlier, after the police were caught off guard by the Watts riots and had to call in more than 14,000 National Guardsmen. Ron McCarthy was there. The riots in 1965 were a game changer. A good portion of South Los Angeles was burning to the ground. Powerless against snipers, looters, and arsonists operating in the dark, police and National Guardsmen had tried mostly to confine the disorder to the 42 square miles of this area. Police had no real strategy for how to respond and were criticized for using excessive force. After six days, 31 civilians, two cops, and a fireman were dead. It was a formative experience for the LAPD because they realized that they needed well-trained, well-organized people that could handle that level of conflict. As SWAT teams spread across the country, police were ramping up the war on drugs under President Reagan. So when we say no to drugs, it'll be clear that we mean absolutely none, no exceptions. Police were given more authority to enter people's homes without knocking to search for drugs. And that increasingly became the job of SWAT teams. Peter Kraska has been studying the issue for more than 20 years. He's found that not only has the percentage of small cities with SWAT teams grown from 13 to 80 in 24 years, but more than 80% of deployments are to look for drugs. The whole SWAT phenomenon was morphing. SWAT had gone from an entity that was all about saving lives in real dire circumstances to prosecuting the drug war inside people's residences using SWAT teams. 